Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Unscripted Coding. Today, what we want to do is create an Office add-in. Specifically, I wanted to create a uh, Word plugin. So for those of you who are not familiar with Microsoft Word, uh, where have you been? It is, of course, the massively popular, practically staple in every Office word processor. So I might type a uh, uh, sale and purchase agreement and start writing things in. Uh, I hereby declare whatever, whatever. But what what is not too common to see are people developing additional plugins for Word. It used to be really, really popular and there's still some tools that come in, but you can take a look at say, Adobe Acrobat that I have installed on this computer. Uh, it doesn't come with Microsoft Word, but they have an add-in with buttons. And in theory, you can create your own little tab here that might say unscripted coding, and it does whatever feature function you want it to do. So you might click a button to format or paste or create certain templates. I wanted to figure out exactly how you would create that because I have seen a lot of bootstrapped, really small budget um, startups that are able to create a word plugin. I had always assumed it would be fairly hard, but it really doesn't seem like it when I took a look at the, well, I skimmed the start of some of these tutorials. So I have here create office add-in project using the Yeoman generator, and it looks like it uses NPM, Node.js, and and possibly just using JavaScript. You take a look here, all of these seem to be fairly straightforward steps. And you can even do it in Visual Studio Code looks like it's roughly the same steps as well. So we're going to play around with that, see how far we get, but I'm going to follow these two articles to just get the prereqs up and running. As you know, I already have uh, Visual Studio Code installed. That's one of my favorite programs. I also have JS installed on this computer already. It might be a bit old, but I have um, I have NPM and Node.js installed. So I have to install these uh, these generators and we'll start moving from there. Okay, so uh, I have here one of the videos right off Microsoft's website, and you can see what uh, this looks like. Uh, they have created a, a little bit of an icon here, show redaction tasks, task paint, and then it pulls up this little add-in. So you almost get a full page of of items for you to actually work in. Uh, it's more than just a handful of buttons. You can actually put things together. And this is where I see a lot of uh, legal tech startups playing around with uh, boxes with text in them to pull from the web, all sorts of these things. Uh, I was a little bit confused, but now it makes perfect sense because you do get your own page. Um, the reason I was confused is because you get to create this task pane and you can use regular, React. These are all front end, web front end interfaces. So I, I found it a bit strange because I had assumed this would just be a couple of buttons for you to, to choose things for. Uh, in this case, you know, obviously React and Angular are being used so that you can design this pane. Um, the other thing that 
very quickly I can tell is uh, we're going to be making heavy use of uh, well, web development tools, uh, JavaScript, HTML language, but you're going to be using um, Office's API as well, Microsoft Office's API. That's how you're going to do everything. There's word.styles dot intense reference like obviously none of these things are built into javascript so we are going to have to learn to use uh the the javascript api so let's take a quick look here they have um they have of course documentation for you to to try and do a bunch of things with it um where where I've taken a bit of a risk is uh, I you get the option between using TypeScript and JavaScript. Uh, I have only ever played around a tiny bit with TypeScript. Uh, I like being pretty loose with JavaScript, being a very poor, inexperienced programmer. But let's try TypeScript, get that uh, syntactic sugar, just take advantage of um, take advantage of, of something a bit more uh, a bit more strong. Um, this is going to cause me to take a bit more time to do everything because I'll be trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do to do it properly. Um, even now, as I'm saying this, I might actually revert back to JavaScript if this doesn't, if this is too hard, too difficult. But anyways, uh, we seem to have our project set up. Um, let me just pull up my Visual Studio Code so you can take a look here. Um, we have a couple different things. Uh, you have, of course, uh, all of your standard uh, files. So you, you could uh, use a bunch of different dependencies. They've already put in Office dependencies, but I, I can't imagine what other dependencies you might have because I keep thinking a word plugin should be pretty simple. But if you start if you start trying to get things off the web, if you're trying to do a lot of processing, that uh, maybe you'll be creating more dependencies in your package, and uh, your manifest is uh, where you're putting uh, a bunch of these items. But where it's interesting is if you go into your source you're going to see commands. I feel like this is where you can actually do a couple of items. And then the, the task pane seems to be more, how do you create that visual area and what you're supposed to do in, in that, um, that box on the, on the right-hand side of your screen that would have all the buttons, all the fields for you to fill out. Whereas commands, I feel like, and I'm making an assumption here, it is at the top of the document, these buttons. Um, so uh, I, I guess there's the next thing to do is figure out how to deploy this and whether there's a very quick way to write a couple of lines, see how it looks, write a couple of lines, see how it looks, because that would make things a lot easier. If there is a big delay between how long it takes to reload, this might be very, very tough to do. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, let's, let's see what's, what's next. All right, very quickly, you can see that we have our test environment here. Um, this is Microsoft Word, as you know, and we have our default project. You click show test pane, uh, ignore that debug uh, message, and then you have your controls right here. And if you click run, it'll throw in hello world. So you can see this is where you might use React um, or Angular to design something quite nice. You have hello world, uh, so you see that it can be connected to your document. And this is all done right after you create that project, all in uh, with that Yeoman generator. And then you just run npm start in the right folder. And you'll, you'll click through a bunch of OKs, and then 
it'll it'll throw up a, a Microsoft Word for you to play around with. Right now, we've done nothing, but uh, we're going to modify this a little bit to have a different look, different commands, different things to do. Okay, this is it. I think I got what I set out to do. Um, you can see that we have a custom name, custom uh, label for the task pane, and we can change these logos if we want to, but it's not really the object here. I'm gonna click OK, and we're gonna see here unscripted coding. This is our task pane. Uh, we really haven't done anything, but what I've done was just go into that task HTML file right here. And I've edited the color just a bit of text to make sure that yes, this is standard HTML. You can do whatever you want with it. It even comes with a CSS file. So uh, you can put those together to make it look absolutely beautiful. Um, the logos are all within the project as well. You can change the icon so that it shows something less generic, or you might take it out entirely. But uh, what I think is actually most important is you can click a button and do things. And so for me, what I wanted to do is make sure that here we can uh, insert text and we can clear it. So what I've done here is we find the body, the document, we clear it out, and then we insert HTML. This is what I'm most comfortable with because you can put in um, H1 headers, which will correspond with heading one, heading two, you can have something bolded. Um, it's really painful if you decide to do um, insert text, insert bolded text, insert text again, and just keep going down. I think this insert HTML just makes so much more sense to anyone who does a bit of web programming because it's going to be so much easier for you to put text in here. Um, formatting, you're going to want to be a little bit careful, but whatever. Uh, we sync this up, and then the next thing we want to do is get another section. And here we are loading the header. We're getting the header. We're getting the primary uh, header. You could do the first page or you can do odd or even pages, but we're going to find primary all the headers and we're going to put in a, an official looking header head, uh, letter head, and it's, it's right here. So you can put text, you can clean up the page and do things. And of course, um, the word JavaScript a API is just so much bigger than that. Uh, you you can put tables, you can take paragraphs, notes, lists, blah, 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 blah. Like you can put in all sorts of things. You can track changes, you can do comments. Uh, I wonder if you can do red lines. Red line. Uh, oh, actually, I guess I'd be under track changes. Anyways, uh, this is just a really quick proof of concept to say, Yes, what you can do is use this, and what I wanted to do is have a bunch of buttons down here, and that would throw up a bunch of templates. So, for example, uh, my workplace might have a couple different contracts that keep showing up, and I want to be able to throw up a template, have a couple missing gaps, fill it in, maybe even have fields right in this page. 
get that information out of the field, throw it in here. Two things I I might do in a separate um separate videos that I think are important next steps are number one, figure out if I can do multiple pages. So can I click run and it'll go to another HTML page? I'm almost certain you can, but let's say I click this button, go to, and I would be able to go to uh, another page with more options, fewer options. Uh, I think, and I'm making it an assumption here, an educated guess, that you're just going to have a number of HTML files Where'd it go? A number of HTML files here that kind of uh, ape graph to each other, and you would go and go back and forth, uh, and and they all have their own buttons and 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 text areas and fields and so on for you to to get data from. I I can't see why it wouldn't work that way. The other thing that I know I was looking at but I didn't actually put in here is whether we could search up some text say every time something shows up, the word something, um, and replace it or do some sort of activity because I think we all have that experience in Microsoft Word as well, where we have a handful of templates, but you just keep changing the name or um, keep changing the same number. So uh, every time you see a three, flip it to seven or vice versa, and you can click a button to do all of that for you. Um, <clears throat> that's basically it. Sure, there are some very, very clever things you can do. And I also um, have a feeling that you're able to go and connect externally. So you are probably able to get data from external sources as well. So if you're like, uh, if you take one of our other projects that we've done on this channel, create an API through Django, through Fast API. Uh, post online, you might be able to supply data into all of your all of your uh, task pane. So you can click run; it'll fetch the say current temperature of all your plants right now through your API through IoT. Comes back into this panel. It's going to create the right text and throw it back into this page. I I can't see why that wouldn't work, and it probably would. So uh, those are next steps for me to test, but this turned out to be a lot more painless, a lot less painless than I thought it would be. These are pretty good tools and you can see when I make uh, very minute changes um, that they show up immediately. So for example, if I wanted to change that official looking letterhead to unscripted coding, I just save and I don't even have to rerun or anything. I can just expect clicking run, this will change. And you can see. So there's instant hot reload. That's great for development. That will make it very quick to develop these tools. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, we're going to do another, I'm certain we're going to do another follow up video. So keep paying attention and I will see you next week for our next project.